Hello Knitters, it's Rena, the Slow Knitter, and back from vacation. Hello everyone. It's the uh, Friday before Memorial Day in the United States, which is a holiday for us. A uh, three-day holiday, long weekend, and um, I'll probably post this tomorrow morning. Since it's late Friday afternoon, I probably don't want to post it tonight. But anyway, welcome. Welcome back to my subscribers and welcome to new viewers who have never viewed this podcast before. And if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button below and subscribe to this uh, channel. Anyway, welcome. Welcome to the Slow Knitter. I'm going to check my notes. I think this is episode 43, which is great. I don't know why. It just is. Anyway, I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be back home. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. We went on a cruise down the coast of Spain to Morocco, ended up in Lisbon, and we flew home from Lisbon via Amsterdam. And every part of the trip was better than the, I, this was one of the best trips we ever took. I think it was, it was great people on the ship. It was great ports. It was great excursions, um, tours of different areas. I walked a lot, and for those of you who don't know, um, I'm just looking at my notes, trying to find what I'm supposed to be saying here on this podcast, because I do take notes, and this is episode, oh, this is episode, sorry, this is episode 42, um, and before I left, I wrote down that I would talk about, um, my top six knitting challenges. I might save that for maybe the next podcast or something on my IG uh, TV, but um, at this point, I'm just gonna go through some FOs and some um, projects that I'm working on. So this will be a short-ish episode. Uh, anyway, um, I will post below where you can find me on Instagram, on Ravelry, and my email contact information, um, and on Facebook. It's all the slow knitter. I think on Ravelry, I'm the slow knitter ATL for Atlanta. Um, so all that will be posted below. Okay, let's get started. Um, just, uh, you just stay towards the end. I'll chatter a little bit about, uh, the trip, which was really pretty fantastic. Um, but 10 days on a cruise ship is enough for me and for Bob. Uh, but we really, really enjoyed it. So it was a nice break, but I didn't get a lot of knitting done. I didn't. I thought I would. I did like every afternoon go to a uh, big lounge area on the ship and knit a little bit, but then I would be chatting with people and be going off and doing something else, getting a cappuccino and a cookie. Um, but uh, so I did get some knitting done, not a lot. But when I got home last, I think we've been home a little over a week, uh, I did finish. I was going to actually bring this on the trip to finish the project, but I decided against it and I'm glad I did. And I, so I brought it home and finished it at home and I will show it to you right now. This is, let me make sure I'll show you the right side. This is my Helen Stewart. Um, what is the name of the show? <laughs> I just went blank on the name of the show. Pebble Beach Shawl. Yeah, I did it in the small size because many of you know I'm pretty small. And um, it, it was enough. I was going to go to the medium, but I decided to do the uh, small size. You can see the color. It's sort of a blushy pink neutral color. Um, and it's a, it's a Barocco Corsica is the yarn. And it is a cotton cashmere blend, 85% cotton, 15% cashmere. So it's got a lot of drape and a lot of, of uh, it was lovely, really lovely to knit with. Um, and you know, you can wear it a whole bunch of different ways, crescent shape. So you can wear it sort of like this, or you can literally wear it over your shoulders, um, drape it over your shoulders. I wanted a, like a lightweight cotton shawl for when I wear my sundresses in the summer and I don't want to bring a jacket nor sweater and I can just drape this over my shoulders and it would be enough. And, and um, yeah, I love it. I love the feel of it. The, the uh, challenge in this is, is blocking it at the end. And there's a lot of lace, so you want to make sure that you get 
uh, maximum use of blocking with the lace. And um, I basically steam blocked it on the ironing board with the iron on steam and painfully, you know, pinned each of these uh, picots and, um, but it's really, I, I think I love it a lot because of the cotton yarn. I purposely, so this is my second cotton shawl. Last year I did uh, the Soul Bound shawl um, with Quince and Company Willet uh, cotton, cleaner cotton, which I love. Uh, and I love Corsica. I really, really, really like Corsica. Um, so I'm happy with, with finally having that bow. But I think this, I thought, let, let's put it this way. I think I started like last August or September. <laughs> but I finally got it off the needles because I kept putting it aside while I had my cast on itis incidences, which I still do. Although I'm only down to eight whips. I mean, that sounds like a lot, but it's only eight. <laughs> anyway, so in a bow, I also have a hoe. Uh, which is a sock that I finished. I'm going to have to redo, I finished this, um, I think while we were sailing around on the ship because it's sock and easy to do. And it's a uh, uh, cute knit picks uh, sock with uh, vocabulary yarn, toe and heel. Um, not quite happy with the heel. It's afterthought heel, so I might take it out and redo it. But in the meantime, it's fine. It's cute. It's fine. And the other one is on the needles. Usually I do my socks tandem, but because it's a vanilla sock, I didn't mind doing it, you know, one at a time. And so it's going to be the same. And it's cupped down. So yeah, I'm happy with, uh, I'm happy with this. Do you all see that dot in the corner? Hmm, I don't know what that is. Anyway, so, and this is held in my um, Renee, uh, Renee of, um, I'll stick this in here better, of uh, Lowland Originals out of the Netherlands. This is one of the first bags I ever purchased. And I still, it's like my favorite sock bag. It's my, every time I reach for a sock bag, oh, this is, which I love. Um, let me tell you what else is going on. Now, I'm in the slog part of my sweater. I'm in the sloggy, I'm in slog land. I'm making the Andromeda sweater from Quince and Company, from Pam, designed by Pam Allen, out of their uh, turn yarn, uh, which is their, I would say, it's sort of a heavy fingering light sport. They call it fingering, but to me it's a little heavier, but it's nice. And this is the pattern. So it's a nice cardigan. And um, so I'm really just in the sloggy part right now. I'm finishing the very end of it, the very bottom of it. And it's just gonna be a garter bottom, but I tried it on and it fits. It looks like a hot mess right now. But I think at the end, it's going to be lovely. I tried it on and it's going to be perfect. I had to go down a needle size. I did the size small and went down a needle size because I'm such a loose knitter. But uh, the yarn is really wonderful to work with. I'm just in the sloggy part, but I see the end. No, I see the end of the body. Then I have the sleeves. And then the decision is full length sleeves or right below the elbow sleeves. I don't know because I could probably wear this sweater through the fall easily. So I might go the full length and I'm going to take my time. Hopefully in an upcoming podcast, it will be done. Well, you'll see it on Instagram as done. But yeah, it's, uh, it's closer than it was. I brought this with me on the trip and I really, really thought that I would get that I didn't. Because we had so many outings and... A friend of mine who had also taken a cruise, I guess during part of my cruise actually, she took a longer cruise and she said, if you have like port days almost every day, and we did, she says, it's gonna be hard to, you're not gonna wanna do as much knitting. And she was exactly right. I mean, I got that sock down and put an afterthought heel in badly. I have to redo it. Um, but 
I don't know, I had too much fun on the trip. I'll tell you more about that. Uh, I did me, I'll tell you what else I brought and I'll show you. I don't know if I shared this with you last time because I usually review my previous podcasts so I don't get repetitive. Um, but I started um, a new shawl, which was, I think I posted about it. Janina, Janina Calio of Wool, Woolenberry, Woolenberry Designs um, has a shawl, which I um, purchased mm, a couple of years ago called Stella. And Stella was my paternal grandmother's name. My mannequin, oh, I don't think it's here, Ethel. There she is. Um, is my maternal grandmother grandmother's name. This is my paternal Nana Stella, we used to call her, Nana Stella. Um, so when I saw this, I thought, oh, it's my grandmother's name. Uh, and then at Heart and Spirit Atlanta, I love those girls. Um, they sold me uh, some old rusted chair, which is a sherbet color. I did show it to you, now my memory's going back. And um, I think that's Farmer's Daughter. Yes, it's Farmer's Daughter Fiber. Let's see. I put it in here somewhere. Yes, it is. Farmer's Daughter's Fiber in the um, Cowboy Country colorway. Anyway, I've got these and I got it on the needles and I think I showed it to you last time. But it's going to be just a crescent-shaped shawl. I love Janina's designs. It's going to end up being a great combination. So this is on the needles. No rush on this. Sort of, it will get done when it gets done. I just wanted to share it with you and tell you that there really isn't an update on it. Which really means I forgot that I already did share it with you. Sorry. Anyway, so this that's going to be um, a lovely shawl. Now... One shawl that I did bring with me that I didn't post about um, was uh, the Rune Shawl by Helen Stewart. You know, I'm a big Helen Stewart fan. The Pebble Beach Shawl is Helen Stewart. Draping uh, Ethel over there is a Helen Stewart impression shawl, which I just leave out all the time because I love looking at it. Every now and then I'm like, I can't believe you did that. Um, this is my Rune Shawl. And the Rune Shawl is... Um, one of Helen Stewart's Shawl Society shawls from last, Shawl Society two, maybe two or three. Uh, she just started Shawl Society four, which I joined right away. Um, but the uh, Rune Shawl, I'll show you a picture of it. No, I didn't have a picture of it. Oh, yes I do. It's just a triangle shawl with a sort of a lacy edge to it. So that's the rune shawl. And it's a two color shawl. So what I did was I had um, uh, Madeline Toss Twist Light in the Peat, P-E-A-T colorway. Again, I'm, I'm having flashbacks of already telling you this, but I'll bring you up to date on this. And Barnyard Knits in uh, something called a berry or something berry colorway. And I thought these two together would be a good combination. I did work on this on the cruise, so, um, because it was sort of easy peasy to work on. And I did get somewhere. I did uh, manage to get somewhere with it. So this is a shape, it's gonna be a triangle shape. And you know what? I don't think I have a triangle shape shawl. Or if I do, I don't know where it is, but you can see these two colors go very well together. Um, and at the end, the, you know, it'll, it'll sort of goes like this. Oops. And at the end, the trim will be in this sort of berry-ish color way. Right? It'd be pretty. So, you know, it's just a very simple garter stitch triangle shawl. Um, and I'll block it big so it'll lay on my shoulders right. 
And at the end of the day, with all my shawl knitting and all my experimenting, I do, I'm getting the feeling that I know which shawls work for me the best, which are the asymmetrical and the maybe the triangle. The crescent has to be of a certain size to work um, for me. So I'm still contemplating which way to go, whether I go more crescent shape, triangle shape, asymmetrical, but I keep knitting stuff that I just love and, and one color, two color, three color shawls, I love. I just wanted to show you this that I just bought and I just got it the other day. So we're moving on to quick acquisitions. Let me bend down because I dropped it while I was showing you this shawl. I don't know how many of you know Tracy of um, Thimble and Thread Makes. She's very, she used to have a podcast. I don't think she's podcasting much anymore. She might throw up a quick podcast here and there, but mostly I think she's just making. Um, she's a great bag maker. Here's her card. Thimble and Thread Makes. Um, she's out of the UK. She's a busy mom of a couple of boys. And she posted about a um, backpack that she made. Now I've been looking for backpacks. I'm a backpack girl. And I've been looking for a lot of backpacks. Uh, and I know the knitters, there's knitters backpacks and they sell out really quickly. And so Tracy posted like a whole video on how to use her backpacks, uh, how to store knitting, how to store all that. And I thought, okay, and I'm gonna have an update. And I, I never make updates, never, never do. I set my clock to them or uh so i went on her etsy shop i went on her pay her, her website page and she just makes them to order so i thought oh okay i'll have and a month later i received this yesterday and this is my backpack oops that tracy made it's a knitter's backpack i'm telling you this thing is fantastic i just had in there the, um, so it, it's, it's great for a two ball or more project. So I just had the, um, this, I put two skeins of yarn and the knitting itself in the backpack. I'll start you after. I also have in here my Will and Honey, Little Notions pack, purse thing. I have the pattern. Yeah, because there's a place for the pattern in here. Literally a place for the pattern in here that you just slip in like this. You can't, let me, let me bend down so you can see. So you slip in the pattern here, there's place for the knitting. There's also a zipper compartment on the inside. If you want to put your wallet or anything, your keys in here, there's also um, a clasp for your keys. If you want to carry your keys on the outside. Um, and there's just plenty of room for anything else you want to put in here. There's also, so it zips up. It's a le nice leather handle. It zips up um, some canvas, um, backpack thing. There's a pocket on the outside. I'm telling you, this thing is perfect. So I'm very happy to get it. Um, I think Tracy did a fantastic job. I love the color. It's a blue. Uh, it's very lightweight. So even if I, like next week I'm going, next weekend is Stitches Atlanta. I'm so excited. Um, just signed up for some classes. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But I'm good. my plan is to bring this I have some homework assignments for some classes. So I'm just gonna bring everything in here and this will be my bag for the event. I have a feeling I'm gonna be carrying this bag a lot. So thank you very much, Tracy. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. I love it. Love it. I want to put more patterns in there. One piece of news that I wanted to share with you that I want um, everybody that's in this area to actually go there. But those of you who are familiar with Lori 
um, Lori Ann from Arkansas Yarn Company. She makes beautiful yarns. Okay, let me just get that out of the way. If you have not gone to Arkansas Yarn Company and purchased her yarn, go right now. In fact, turn this video off, go right now and order some yarn. She's beautiful yarn. But the most exciting thing about uh, news from Lori Ann is that she is opening up her own LYS. She's opening up her own local yarn shop in Malvern, Arkansas, which is just a little town. And it's so cute. I mean, go to her Instagram page, Arkansas Yarn Company, and see some pictures that she's done of the work she's doing in the shop. Um, so let me make sure I, she's opening her own local yarn store on June 8th, which I guess is next weekend. No, two weeks, two weeks. Um, it's in downtown Malvern, Arkansas. So if you're in the area or passing through it, please be sure to stop by. I mean, I think she would love it. Uh, and she's buying yarn. She's got a lot of money invested in it. And she's, I'm so proud of her as a former entrepreneur. I, I just love when women take the plunge and do their own business like I did. And it will be successful. It's scary. It's exciting. So best of luck, Lori Ann. Fingers crossed for a great grand opening. And I think you will be hugely successful. So if you're in Melbourne or near Melbourne, please be sure to go to Arkansas Yarn Company's local. Uh, it's a local yarn store. I guess it's going to be called Arkansas Yarn Company. Congrats to you, really, congrats. Um, so I wanted to get that in, make sure I covered that. Um, also, let's see, what else? Oh, also, I was fortunate enough to um, get my hands on a Quince & Co. Um, monthly, uh, quarterly, sorry, quarterly yarn uh, thingy and uh it's also always beautifully packaged in this box and this quarter for the higher tier uh it came with just a boatload of quince and co finch yarn is that right yeah uh, it, this is like gorgeous these are my colors. I love them. Grays. And there's and also some shades of blue. Also came with it was a a heathered. Wait a minute. This is a heathered. Something else came with it that was a little unusual. It's all finch. But some go with the pattern and some that look at I better get busy. But when it came a shawl pattern from um Isabel Kramer. And it's called the Spaith Shawl. It's gorgeous. I'm really excited about knitting this shawl. A lot of short rows. A lot of these colors are in here. Um, so I'm excited. I will eventually do this. I think it's asymmetrical. Yes, it's asymmetrical, which as I said before, is probably up my alley. There's some cabling. There's some short rows. There's garter, 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 which I love, love, love. Um, and so I'm excited to do this. So this is the Quince and Co. Quarterly. Um, so I'm happy to get busy on that eventually. I kind of want to finish some of these whips that have been languishing. Um, oh, I'll finish them. I'll get to them. Um, I also have another pair of socks on the needles. Um, they're part of Mina Phillips Sock Club, uh, from last season. I mean, she did it 2018, 2019 for a few months, so... That's, that's good. Let's see. Um, also, while we're away, we, one of our ports of call. I'm going to switch the trip now. Okay. I have a lot more to show, but I don't want to, this was kind of, I wasn't going to do this podcast right now, but I thought, let me get back to you. I haven't been, I have been away for 
six weeks. I mean, I think my last podcast was six weeks ago. I've never gone that long in the two and a half years I've been podcasting. But I was busy. I was away. Um, let's talk about my trip for a few minutes. I'll sign off. And next time I'll come back probably next week with maybe a finished sweater or at least a finished sweater that I can show you the body of. <laughs> Not to sleep. Um, and a little bit else of what else I've, you know, I'll probably cast on something else. I'm also working on the Boylan Knit sweater uh, that I showed you last time. And maybe I'll make some more progress on that. I don't know. I don't know. But I did. So my trip was fabulous. We started in Barcelona. We flew to Barcelona. Chatter part for those of you who want to hang around. Um, we flew to Barcelona. We boarded the ship in Barcelona. We sailed down the coast of Spain to fantastic ports like Valencia, Malaga, where Picasso was born and has a fabulous museum. And we toured the museum. We had olive oil tastings with, I think I told Bob, I think I ate every piece of bread there was in Spain. I just, bread, 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 bread. Um, and we ended, part of our trip was Casablanca, Morocco, very, very exotic Morocco. Um, so we, Went to Morocco, we went to Casablanca and Tangier, went through the Kasbah. Um, and we ended up in Lisbon. No, the first port in Portugal was a city called Oporto or Porto, P O R T O. I've seen it also, Oporto, not O apostrophe, just O P O R T O. And, and we didn't really have anything planned that day. Uh, cause we were leaving the next day. We didn't want to be, I walk so much. We were just beat. And I said, all right, I just want to go to one yarn shop on this cruise. I'm not bothering you about going yarn shopping. I just want to go to one yarn shop. So I looked up this one yarn shop and I posted it on my Instagram page and it was the most darling shop. And we found it. We had great taxi drivers and they found it for us and we found it and I came away with three skeins of yarn. One I gave to my friend Teresa. Um, and I'm reaching over to get them. So I thought I wanted to get something maybe that was more indigenous to Portugal, like get something with a sheep that was more, that was Portuguese. Um, she also had her own line of yarns that she sold that is made in the UK from um, uh, sheeps that are native to the UK. Uh, so I was going to buy her, the, the indigenous yarn. And then I was, and then I was looking at her yarn and she said to me that the one in Portugal, the one from Portugal is more like cotton. It doesn't have a lot of give, whereas hers has a little bit more give. And I thought, you know what, I'm just better at knitting things that have give. And anyway, this is her yarn. This is what she specified. It's called Olivia. I posted about it. And the name of her yarn shop is Ovelha Negra. Ovelha, Ovelha Negra. Do you believe it or not? I never asked her name. Shame on me, but she was so lovely and her husband was there, or some gentleman was there. Might have been her companion, her husband, her worker. I don't know, it looked like her husband. Um, why, I don't know. I just assumed it was. Um, but I got these lovely sort of neutrally blue and this neutrally natural color. I don't know if they're gonna be one thing. And they're only 50 gram skeins, so they're not huge, but they're, I don't know, I just love them. I thought they were so pretty. And then when I um, pulled that end, I thought, that, that, oh yeah, I can definitely knit with this yarn. I could definitely, this feels like light fingering really light fingering so and she was actually winding some up to label and put away so it says 55 percent la marino 45 percent algodot i don't know what that is i might have to look it up but you know that's the name of her shop and it takes uh probably a one or two it might be a sock yarn but it's I like the neutrality of these colors and I have a lot of colors that go with it or maybe it's just a 100 skein something. 
or maybe striped socks. I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be something. But I loved it. And I bought Teresa sort of almost like, Teresa likes darker, richer colors. I gave her, I bought her like almost like a blue black of this uh, yarn. So that was fun. That was my one yarn shop visit. <laughs> I didn't have any. Um, but it really was a great trip. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I have MS. So I walk with a knee brace. An ankle brace, a cane. So to see me walking, you think, oh my God, the walking wounded. Um, <laughs> so for me to walk as much as I did on uneven surfaces like cobblestone streets and long walks from the ship to the bus through various terminal, uh, uh, boat terminals was really challenging, but Bob was such a trooper. You know, he, we made it, there's no problem. We had great people on the ship that um, we were often the last ones on the bus. <laughs> I was like, uh, my cane, I'm like trying to get some. And people were so great. They're like, yay, champion, yeah. Oh, this guy in the Picasso Museum. I had to climb steps to get to the rooftop overview of the city. And I got to the tap top and there was a, a museum guard there and he raised his hand and go, champion. <laughs> I was like, champion. So it was so fun. But the best thing was that we had a celebrity on the ship, a soap opera star celebrity. First name is Susan. So that's all I'll say. She looks fantastic. She's teeny tiny. You know who I'm talking about. She's very lovely, by the way. She kept calling me Trooper. You're such a trooper. Like, yeah, well, do what you gotta do. Um, it was fun. But I tell you what, I'm slightly uncomfortable now. <laughs> I think I think that much walking. Did something to one of my nerves and my legs because owie but it's just a question of doing some good stretches and maybe resting because i have not stopped since i got back i'd catch up with my girlfriend i'm gonna lynch every day <laughs> somebody else i'm busy bob's like i can't I get you i was like oh, i have to catch up i have to give everybody little gifts because i did buy little gifts for people so fun it's so fun but i'm back for it now <laughs> Me and Advil, best friends. Although I'm a little nervous about Advil now that I need to start to seek another anti-inflammatory. Although my uh, MS wellness people want me to go on probably a strong turmeric um, supplement, which is acts as anti-inflammatory. So I'm gonna do that. I do feel better with every day I feel better, but owie. <laughs> but I walked a lot and best news is, even though I ate my way through Spain, and I ate every piece of bread in Spain, Morocco, and Portugal. I didn't gain any weight. Uh, I think it must have been the walk. <laughs> I didn't walk that much, but I must have walked enough to burn something off. Um, but yeah, so it was so much fun. I so want to go on another cruise again, but I have to pay, pace myself because I probably won't have as good a time if you go too soon. So you need to balance it. But we have a busy summer coming up. Also figured I'd podcast today because the house is about to be painted outside and it's going to be a racket and a lot of people outside. It's also like in the 90s and going to be in the 90 degree, 90 degrees. And for those of you in, uh, in centigrade, it's like 40s, right? 35, 40, in the 40s, 40-ish. That's hot. That's hot. So we're going to be hot. Uh... Uh, so I'm gonna save my other stuff that I was gonna to talk to you about, which is um, my top six knitting challenges. I think I'm gonna add a seventh. And we'll talk about knitting challenges, but not today. Today, I'm just sharing FOs, what I'm working on and what I acquired. And the fact that we have stitches next week in Atlanta, and I'm so excited. I've signed up for a class with Laura Lee Beltman, who was on Knit Stars. I love her and she's gonna teach cable without cable needles, which my friend said, I could have taught you that. I said, I know, but it's Laura Lee Beltman. I'm sort of a hero worshiper when it comes to knitting celebrities, not so much real celebrities, but knitting celebrities. Um, and Franklin Habit, who I just adore, and we're gonna do a garter stitch class. So I have some classes. The Marketplace opens up on Thursday night for those of us who, um, 
have classes and so my knitting group and I are going on Thursday night to the marketplace. I'm very excited. Um, looking forward to it. So that's next week. So maybe I'll podcast the week after. I also found some more patterns that I really want to do. Sweater patterns. I'm not really good at sweaters, but we'll see. Anyway, that's it, I think. I'm just gonna look for my little thing that turns this thing off and on, or you'll see my finger pointing off. What the hell? Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I don't really know what the title of this is. I just know it's episode 42. So welcome, hope you enjoy, and um, I'll see you in less than a couple weeks when I report back to you on Stitches, talk about my knitting challenges, and talk about what I bought at Stitches which is probably a lot. I'm also gonna be hanging out in the Heart and Spirit booth, um, see my friend Lauren from Old Rusted Chair, who will be there on Saturday, spend some time with her. I'm really looking forward to it. This is my first real big event. I hope I do okay. Um, the girls at Heart and Spirit said they will have a chair for me, so I will be sitting um, and hobbling my way through the marketplace with my cane and my backpack and my Numerous braces that I wear my leg. Gotta keep going. Keep on trucking. All right. Hey, I love you all. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. Barbecue your head off for those in the U.S. Uh, Three-day weekend. Love it. Start of summer for us is the unofficial sort of kickoff of summer out of a barbecue. Bob loves a Memorial Day barbecue. All right. Okay. Hey, have a great one, and I'll see you in 10 days or so. All right, bye.